setting up a game of Merchants of Missouris begins with dividing the coins into their denominations of 1s, 5s, and 10s and creating a supply off to the side where all players can reach. Then take the three basic character cards, the advisor, the merchant, and the customer, and place them face up in the center of the table where all players again can reach. You will then take the remaining character cards, the more advanced characters, shuffle them up, and pull a number equal to the number of players minus one. So in a two-player game, which is what we're going to demo in this video, we're going to take one of these advanced characters and add it to the lineup of characters. These are the four characters that will be played in this particular two-player game. As the game, as you play more and more games, more characters will come out, changing up the replayability. You'll also take the three market cards, shuffle them up, and draw one, and set it aside. This is the card that determines the end game of the particular game that you're playing. So for this particular game, this game will end if the number of orders equals or exceeds the number of players times five. So in a two-player game, we will need a total of ten or more orders face up on the table at the end of a player's turn. And then during the end of the game, each player will gain coins equal to the number of different produce cards in their orders. And that will make more sense as we go on. You'll also then shuffle the deck of produce cards deal two cards to each player, and then fill up a market row with four cards, or a supply with four cards. So we're going to flip these out. Each player will be given an action tile. So we'll give this player the green tile down here. This player will take the yellow tile. This will be the tile they use to select their actions. And then you choose a, for a player uh, to be the first player, and you give that player the first player marker, first player tile. So I'll give that to this player down here. All other players who do not have this first player tile will all take one coin from the supply. So they'll essentially start with a victory point. You are now set up and ready to play Merchants of Miseris. Merchants of Miseris is played over a series of rounds made up of players taking their turns. And the game will end when the market card that was revealed at the start of the game is completed at the end of a certain player's turn. On a player's turn, they will take one of they will take their action tile, or in the case of the first player, one of the two action tiles that they have, and they will place their action tile on one of the four face-up character cards, and then will take the action on that card. Placing a tile on the advisor will allow you to discard a produce card from your hand or from the supply and use the produce ability or use the, the, the ability printed on that produce card. Selecting the merchant allows you to add a produce card from the supply to your hand. If you choose the customer, you are able to make an order using one, two, or three identical produce cards from your hand, which will score you points and gain you some coins. And if you use the broker, who is our special character for this particular game, you will get to add two different produce cards from the supply to your hand and then refill the supply. It's important to note that the supply only refills at the end of a round once all players have taken one turn. The first player, denoted by the player who has the first player tile, will actually place both of their tiles back to back before the next player will take their turn. So in this case, this particular player could come here and mark the broker, add two different products or produce cards from the supply to your hand, and they want to pick up the honey card, add it to their hand, and maybe they want to pick up the cucumber and add it to their hand. They will then place their second tile. And so we will come here and we'll use the advisor. Discard a produce card from either your hand or the supply and use that produce card's ability. We're gonna discard the lime. The lime says to add one produce card from the supply to your hand and then draw a produce card. So we'll use that card to pick up the red onion and then we will draw a produce card and add it to our hand. This now ends the first player's turn because they're out of action tiles and we move over to the second player who has a single action tile to use and they are simply going to play on the customer, make an order with one, two, or three identical produce cards and in their hand they're holding the eggplant and the saffron. They're going to play the saffron. The saffron, because they're only using one card, is worth two points. Had they played two saffron, they would gain three and for three saffron cards, they would gain six points. But in this case, we're going to simply play an order of one saffron card, giving us two coins from the supply. 
That is the end of the round. We check to see if the end game condition has been met. Again, our end game condition is, in this case, 10 or more orders. We have a single order on the table, so the game is not over. To reset, the first player marker gets passed to the player to the left. So in this case, this player is going to pick up the first player marker. They will also take back their yellow marker, and our player here will pull back their green marker. You then refill the supply with four cards again. So we'll flip these cards out again. Um, and we were on one thing I did not show. You also will place a coin from the supply on any of the characters that were not selected in the round. So in this case, the merchant will have a coin added to that card. And if someone selects the merchant, not only will they get to add a produce card from the supply to their hand, they will also get the coin that is on that merchant. So our player here gets to take their next turn, and they're going to use their first to discard a produce card. They're simply going to discard the eggplant. The eggplant allows them to gain two coins, so we'll discard that. We're going to gain two coins, add it to our scoring pile here, and then we have the second tile to play. And we're going to play the broker, which allows us to pick up two different produce cards from the supply. So we're going to collect a pomegranate, and we're going to collect a banana and add those to our hand. It is now this player's turn who's simply going to come to the merchant, take the one point that is there, and add a card from the supply to their hand. So they're going to pick up a pomegranate as well. We check in game condition again. Again, we only have one order that's been placed, so the game is not over. Our green player will take their tile as well as the first player marker. The yellow player will take their action marker back again. We will place a dollar on the customer here because they were not chosen during that round, and then we refill the market to four cards. This is going to continue until, in our case, 10 or more orders are face up on the table. At that point, the round will be finished, and players will then total up the coins that they have collected throughout the game, as well as the, coin, the bonus coins from the market card that is, that is displayed. At the end of that, whoever has the most points is the winner. If there's a tie, the player who scored the most points from the bonus of the market card is the winner. And if there's still a tie, players share the victory. It is important to note that when selecting the character that you wish to play or the action that you wish to take with your action marker, you cannot place your action marker on a character that has already been placed or been selected by another player. So in this case, our yellow player could not select the advisor or the merchant because there are already action tiles there. So they must select either the customer or the broker. The exception to this rule is if a player triggers the end game. So if we had 10 orders on the table, and, up, and our yellow player had not gone yet, they could then place on top of the characters where there were already action markers because the game is coming to an end. So those la the, the last turn that some players may have, they are allowed to double up action markers on a specific character. I want to take a look at the three market cards. So these are the three end game conditions you could possibly have during your game of Merchants of Missouris. The first one is the one that we saw. The game ends if the number of orders equals or exceeds the number of players times five. During the end game, each player gains coins equal to the number of different produce cards in their orders. So if I've got four orders down here that are all of different produce types, if I have a pomegranate, a lime, a honey, and a mango, that would give me four coins at the end of the game. Another end game condition is the game ends when a single player has six or more orders, and during the end of the game, you take this card if you're the first player to make six orders, and then you'll gain three coins. No one else will get any bonus. And finally, the game ends when a single player has earned 20 or more coins. During the end of the game, each player gains two coins for each of their orders. So these are the three ways that the game can potentially end. Taking a look at the character cards, we have our three basic characters. The advisor, who allows you to discard a produce card from your hand or from the supply and use that produce card's ability. We have the merchant, which allows you to add one produce card from the supply to your hand. And we have the customer, which allows you to make an order with one, two, or three identical produce cards from your hand and score the corresponding points. We saw in our demo the broker as one of the special characters. He allows you to add two different produce cards from the supply to your hand and then refill the supply. But the other characters you may come across, you have the beggar, 
draw one produce card, gain one coin. And then if you're the last player this turn, draw one produce card or gain a coin. We have the monger. The monger allows you to draw one produce card and draw an additional produce card for each coin on this character. So he gets more powerful the, the more people do not choose him. We have the peddler. Make an order with one produce card from your hand and gain a coin. So this allows you to make an order with just using just one produce card from your hand as opposed to one, two, or three. And then the noble. Discard one of your orders and use that produce card's ability. So this allows you to discard one of the orders that's on the table and use that card's ability. Now let's take a look at the produce cards and what they provide. The produce cards that you may come across. First of all, I want to break down the card itself. You obviously have the card art, you have the name of the produce, the produce's ability that it provides when you activate the ability, and then a scoring table based on how many cards of this type are used to fulfill an order. So in the case of black pepper, if I use one black pepper for an order, I get two points. Two black pepper will give me three points, and uh, three black pepper will give me six points. If I use three black pepper to fulfill an order, I will place one of these cards on the table face up in front of me to show that I've completed the order. The other two cards would go to the discard pile, so I'm not going to keep a stack of cards in front of, in front of me. And if at any time the, uh, the deck runs out, you'll simply reshuffle the discard pile to create a new deck and continue playing. So looking at the black pepper, if I activate the black pepper's ability, I will draw three cards, and that is drawing three cards from the deck, not from the supply. Cinnamon, also worth two points, three points, and six points, allows me to take two produce cards from the supply, and then I have to choose and discard a produce card from my hand. Salt, also worth two, three, and six. Salt allows me to make an order using produce cards from my hand, and I have to use one salt as a wild card in that order. So if I play this card, discard this card from my hand to activate its ability, it allows me to use another salt card in my hand as a wild card. So it can help me boost up the numbers. Cucumber, zero, three, and five. You may return one of your orders to your hand and gain a coin. The eggplant, also worth zero, three, and five. Activating its ability will give me two coins. Mango, worth one, two, or three points, allows me to add all produce cards of a single type from the supply to my hand. Saffron, draw one produce card. You are the first player next round. So if I, get, if I have the first player token, I get to keep it, or if someone else has it, it moves to me the next round. The honey card allows me to draw one produce card and make an order. The honey is very valuable, worth three, six, or eight points. And again, I draw a produce card from the deck and then I get to make an order. The banana, worth one, two, or three points, allows me to discard any number of produce cards from my hand and then draw that many produce cards from the deck. The lime, worth one, two, or three points, Add one produce card from the supply to your hand, and then draw a produce card. So I get to pick up one of the face-up cards and then draw one from the deck. We have the red onion. The red onion allows you to make an order using produce cards from your hand. This is a very effective card. It's worth nothing if you play a single one, zero, three, and five. This is a very effective card in case the customer down here is covered up by someone else's action marker that allows you to make uh, an order with one, two, or three cards. This would allow me to use the red onion to, in order to, so I'd be able to discard it to activate its ability and be able to make an order. And then we have the pomegranate, worth one, two, or three points. Discard the supply, add four produce cards to it, and draw a produce card. 